I love that we talked for two hours last time and we didn't really record and I messed up. So <laughs> I'm happy we're back. <laughs> But uh, yeah, yesterday I talked for almost two hours with Michael Dunworth. Right. Brain fried. Amazing. Like I love, I, he, he just goes all over the place and I'm trying to follow. And, uh, uh, you know, it's just a very interesting uh, way of thinking and very interesting brain, you know. And uh, I, I love that about, you know, having a podcast. And I think you have the same experience. Like it's just fun to talk to people in the same space and discover their thoughts and their journeys and how they, well, in your case, were once bitten and stayed <laughs> or went further down the rabbit hole. Uh, yeah, it's just super cool. And uh, so uh, it's fun to uh, to uh, make like a dual episode like this, right? It's daily therapy, I find, talking to a Bitcoiner. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, for this podcast, we, uh, you, you, I think... You invited me, but we were like, let's um, let's just make a dual episode. Uh, and we do it on our, our uh, both of our channels, trying to think about because we don't want to replicate our previous conversation or try to uh, to to do that. But um, I think and, and what is fun to share, like I, I I wanted to hear about like your journey into uh, into Bitcoin, and and of course we talked about that a bit. Um, but maybe that's like a nice place to start or something i don't know yeah. like what's your what's your thought yeah absolutely uh yeah i can give the uh, the cliff notes uh i started um in financial markets at the age of 19 in foreign exchange markets on the spot dollar mark desk in london in 1995 and by 1999 i had the opportunity to to move out to singapore to carry on my career out there to further my career in a slightly different area it was in foreign exchange options and um, that, was, that was an incredible experience. What was supposed to be a few years turned into 15 years. And uh, my wife and I got married over there. Uh, excuse me. We moved over there together from the UK and we came back and we got married. But we had all of our kids over there, our four children. And in 2013, I read a book called The 4-Hour Workweek by Tim Ferriss, which made me think about life completely differently. And I realized that I had painted myself into a corner, into a career, which I thought was a great career, I was paying great money. And I thought I'd, you know, I was winning at the game of life and realized I was losing. I was losing everything. I was losing my time. I was losing my, my energy was being expended, I was being completely um, corralled by somebody else for somebody else's gain. My kids were losing because their father wasn't around hardly ever. Uh, my wife was losing because I wasn't there to help support the family. And I was losing because mentally I thought I was doing absolutely everything I could to support the family, everything I could to build a good career, everything I could to follow this social construct of keep your head down, do good work, get a job, get your promotion, climb the corporate ladder, get the 2.4 kids get the white picket fence, you know, I, you know, I yeah. was doing all that stuff. It was all good and I was good at it, but no way in the world were we what you could ever, you know, describe as, you know, fully content. Uh, there was always worries. There was always stress. There was always, uh, you know, anxiety. We we're always running a thousand miles an hour just to stand still. Did and you feel free? Thought, if you look uh -huh. back, did you feel free? If you look back? No. No, hmm. completely trapped. Totally but in trapped. in that moment also or only when you reflect? No, in that moment too. You, hmm. you, you, I knew we were trapped. I knew there was, you know, I was just thinking, daydreaming 10, 15, 20 years ahead when I could finally walk away, hmm. do the big retirement thing. Finally, the time would be mine. Then I could spend my time on the golf course and whatever else. But guess what? The kids would be gone and I wouldn't have seen them. And this is what many people suffer with, like the biggest regrets in life as, as they even come to like 50 or 60. It's like, huh, I didn't spend any time with my kids. Whoa. But it's even worse when you hit your deathbed and you, you know, you're reflecting on your life mm. and you realize how your time on this planet had been completely controlled since the age of three, four or five when you entered into the, uh, you know, the schooling system. That's it. It's all over. It's all over from there. Like somebody else is running your time. 
and you are not free and you're not able to make your own decisions or your choices. You're not allowed to have free thoughts. You're not allowed to spare time. And you're certainly not allowed to uh, express your creativity. Um, you know, you, you're, you're shackled into that system of the education system, 15, 20 years, and then straight into a, a corporate role, if you're mm -hmm. lucky, because that's all the kids want to do. They want to get out there, become bankers, lawyers, surgeons, doctors, you know, all the big fancy jobs. Nobody wants to take the risk, you know, perceived risk of starting their own thing, starting their own business, expressing their creativity, filling a, a gap in the market. Um, no, no, no. That's just for those weirdo entrepreneurs. You know, mm. there's only a few of those amongst us, right? There's probably one in a hundred. I know we all are. This is our natural, our natural state is to be entrepreneurial. Our natural state as human beings is to solve problems with problem solving machines. And this gets beaten out of us. And so there I was reading this book. I'm like, fuck, I, I, I can't have this. You know, I was 36. I can't sit here for another 20 years just wishing this away. And what happens even if I get, I might get fired in 18 months time. Who knows? Who knows what, you know, market conditions could happen? Uh, how many people lost their jobs between 2020 and 2022? No fault of their own, just gone. Thank yeah. you. See you later. But our business has to close and that's the end of your job. You did everything right up until that point. Then you got rug pulled. Or, you know, from situations that you just couldn't control. So in general, we decided... I feel that this is a team, right? A team of understanding the different external for forces that control your life, but also mm -hmm. your thinking, right? And that once you start peeling away that, then you discover all these things where you are actually not even aware of the fact that you were unaware that you were participating in something that you actually or never thought about like where did i sign up for this right yeah. or why why do i think this and also where some people realize well what i think about this is the total opposite of of, of what i was participating in mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. I, I see that as a common team that that once you see that uh, you know all other people are no different than you yeah why are they controlling my life yep. <laughs> you know why why are there things in place that control my life and a great yeah. example of this, of how we've had the wool pulled over our eyes to engage in, in, in behaviors that we would never even ever consider, but now think is just commonplace and perfectly fine. And that would be, so a perfect example of this is, you know, taking out a loan or a mortgage to buy a property. Yeah. We, that's the only way you can buy a property, right? That's the, literally, the, we've been backed into the corner to do this. And everybody thinks that is perfectly okay. This is a perfectly okay way to behave. And you get, so would you willingly debase the purchasing power of everybody else around you by counterfeiting money into the system? Well, I would say no, you wouldn't because you're a good human being. Everybody mm -hmm. listening or watching this is a good human being. But that's literally what you are doing, all of us are doing, when we enter into these agreements with the banks to take yeah. out a mortgage for a house or a loan for a car or a loan, buy something on finance, you know, for your house, a new sofa or whatever it is. Um, so what, what is happening there? When you, when you take out that loan, you enter into that mortgage agreement. We you, validate the game that they are playing, yeah, exactly. actually, right? Yeah. You, you, you validate, you green light the bank to counterfeit money on your behalf into the system which inflates the monetary supply which debases the purchasing power of everybody else around you and the default answer to this from most people is well everybody else is doing it so why shouldn't i do that mm -hmm. you know so you now you enter into this zero sum game and we we every time we do that we are perpetually inflating the monetary supply which is debasing the purchasing power of our currency which is pushing the prices of everything else that we need up against yes. us we've been tricked into it it's very clever very clever so now who owns all of the property a hundred years ago 150 years ago or two or three generations ago the people the people would have owned their own property Sure, they were paying land tax, and we can get into whether or not you ever own anything, but they would have owned the property, right? Mm. Until 
this idea of let's flood the market with cheap money and cheap mortgages so now somebody can afford a nicer house or a better house so but the only way they can afford that is to take the loan and the money from the bank so who owns the property now all the banks very few people own their own property so we've had this transfer of ownership from property from homeowners maybe yeah. your you know great grandfather owned his actual house then your grandfather maybe owned that but then your mum and dad didn't and then you certainly won't so it's been a gradual gradual march of this transfer of ownership of private property from the people who actually need the roofs over their heads to the banks and how do the banks get that well they offer you this dangled carrot and the, <laughs> then you enter into this contract of well we need a deposit of real money that you have actually expended energy to get yes 50,000 euros let's say your life savings i'll tell you what you give us your life savings we'll counterfeit the rest and then you pay us interest <laughs> yeah. on the counterfeit money how does that sound like they that makes double money almost yeah right <laughs> yeah that that is pure usury in in the purest form of usury that is criminal mm. that is immoral that is illegal but somehow they've managed to write loopholes around the legalities of this and tricked everybody into uh participating in this awful game of zero sum outcome where everybody ends up poorer including you you think you've got the house but you don't and they can yeah. take it back whenever they want and they can change the interest rates on you whenever they want and is and this so as simple as like not teaching you because i think you can only come to this realization i also can think about like people who listen to this and i mean i was one of those people so you know you you think about no this could not be that bad right it uh, no that, that you know this sounds very very bad like it's really it's a complete 180 from the perception that i think most people have as to how it works right yeah of course there's loans and then i can buy, I can, I can buy a house because everyone needs a house etc right but once you um if, if if you don't know it right then what you just said sounds very foreign mm -hmm. right sounds very far away and also also as you said right like yeah i'm a uh, if, if you think of yourself that that you're a good human being and you would never um exploit a system um if you found like a way to corrupt it the reality and it's not an opinion is that other people do right so just because you think that you would never do that uh, because you think you're righteous uh doesn't mean that other people would and of course people would i mean you have kids i, I have a kid like the whole self-preservation thing like give me food yep. first that's just in everyone right and i feel like it's not acknowledging that uh yeah you're kind of uh, fooling yourself in a sense right just because you don't want to adopt that reality that's that's where you stay in well almost a dreamland in a sense that you're just like unaware of how how it actually works right and i mean like when i say i was the same like i was 30 and i was working at a bank and i had a mortgage and i had no clue how it worked and then i had a colleague who who told me uh do you did you know that the money in the bank is not yours and i said sorry <laughs> what and then we had a lunch for an hour and he explained to me like how how banking works and then I thought, well, this is a great business model for banks, but I'm an idiot. Like I felt I was like happy to learn, but also like, dude, like you're participating in a system that you have no, you, you don't even know how, how this works and you're happy with the house. But on the other side, as you mentioned, like you were also trapped in a sense in, in an agreement that, yeah, that you just don't understand, you know? And I, f I feel that like when, when you think about that more and more and more, then at one point you feel you, you understand that that is taking away your your sovereignty and freedom in a sense, right? Because if you if you go further in getting loans, or you well, you have a house, you have kids, or maybe some people lease a car or whatever, like you you are just further down that path, and it's also way harder to actually backtrack that and and, and mm -hmm. get out of that. Right. What was your role within the bank? 
I was working as, uh, so my background is in like building startups and new digital businesses. So I was working in like the innovation uh, department, guiding, helping teams to explore new ideas and uh, build them out, etc. But I was, uh, so in different business lines, they had different uh, innovation teams and I was at risk. So there were all these PhD econ econometrist people who were working in Excel every day <laughs> to make reports for the European uh, Central Bank, which was also just a real eye opener, right? Like just seeing super smart people making a report that was always, uh, you know, you have a green, orange, red. It was always orange, <laughs> right? Orange, but, <laughs> and then some explainer, like, yeah, it, it 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 was really like the cubicle thing where people were just sitting yeah. down and like doing. And I always felt what like a waste of, what a waste of brain power and life. Yeah, just energy, right? Yeah. yeah, and and at one point I walked around with the head of risk, and he told me, if I send all these people home, nothing's gonna break, because, you know, if you get your um, your 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 loan payment, like first thing you pay for is your house. So there are almost no defaults on mortgages and stuff like that. Yeah, only if people lose their jobs, some really bad stuff happens. But in general, once people commit to that, then you know that's that's the first thing they pay every month, obviously. And so then I also thought, well, what? Why are these people here? And then he explained to me, well, they're making the <laughs> the reports, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's just a sad, sad scene. So that that time for me was really interesting to learn about how it actually worked, actually realizing that I had no clue and that I was participating in something that I yeah, just did not understand. And then also seeing these people who were obviously very smart, but yeah, chose to be in this career, as you also said, right? And then, um, yeah, you see like these bosses, like the golden cage and banking, like all that stuff is real. Like uh, I, I met people who had two houses and a boat, and then we're like, yeah, yeah I'm not going to fix anything. I'm not going to stick my head out. You know, I don't want to ha have my head chopped off inside here. Like, I don't, I don't want to be fired because I have all these other obligations and loans and stuff. And so it's kind of like, I think it can start with the right incentives, right? If you start your career and you want to contribute to something, but along the way, the, the, the reward system changes that to very yeah, perverse it turns around basically so that what made you get there uh will also uh if, if you continue like that it will also make sure you you <laughs> you get removed from that mm -hmm. place so you stop being you know the different thinker or the innovator or the whatever because then yeah it's not uh, uh it's and unsafe you, to do that basically and you're never yourself that's no, and that's also sad, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because and, you're always yeah. wearing a mask. You, you, you're always the trying. Suit. I didn't yeah, wear the yeah. suit, but yeah, and the suit is, is, I think, the visual example of that. Yeah, in a and sense, you, yeah. you can't, you can't be yourself because you get molded by the people and the incentive structure around you, um, and you have to become a chameleon of sorts to. You're you're one person with your peers. You're another person with your customers. You're another person with mm. your um, higher ups. Uh, then just being yourself, like you know, showing up every day and being yourself and adding value to something that you actually truly believe in. Instead, you're adding value to something just to get by. And like the the psychological drain of that. People talk about burnouts all of the time, and it's just because you're doing the same monotonous bullshit every mm. day that you are not finding any kind of value in. And that and it's is also destroying. not challenging because it's people can play around, you know, these political games and like just fuck around basically because the business model of this is so damn good, right? Like it's fascinating that you have banks with thousands of employees where you know if you just have to manage the pile of money that you loan out and calculate the risk and uh, do uh, you know uh, the payments etc like, i don't think you need more than 100 people to run <laughs> just you know multi-billion uh, mortgage um, portfolio right like it's it's a very simple 
business model, very clear. And I think on one side, to be honest, like it does, the, the origin of banks does make sense to me, you know, if it's credits for businesses, you know, where if, if they have a good projection towards the future, but they need a loan, which is money, you know, energy from the future right now to, you know, accelerate their journey. I mean, like, I, I, I can agree with that. Like that's, I think that's a great function. Um, I think when you take the step to mortgages and houses, like, I think that's already where it gets a bit murky, right? Because it's the same model, but then if you start to like financialize housing, which is, uh, I don't mm -hmm. know, is that the number two human right or something, yeah. you know, that, that already gets murky, right? And that then, you know, different banks with different piles of money start to compete with each other based on the rates and the service and blah, blah, blah. I, I don't know that 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 already starts to become kind of unethical if you want to go there, right? But then, because it's such good money, these banks, instead of just being uh, creditors, they start to become these institutions, and you can you know do investing, and there's a, a high net worth white glove uh, uh, service, like they they do all this other stuff which is basically being paid for by the profit of all the loans. And that's where kind of like this, the business is so good and that's why people can mess around, you know, because the money will be made anyway. Like if you, if you fuck up along the way, but you can, uh, uh, but, but you're politically gifted, then you can stick around, you know, and then uh, you can get the two houses and the boat and whatever. So it's kind of like when I walked around there, it was funny. Like I was also, I, I worked there as a freelancer. And so I had, a MacBook, sneakers, and a T-shirt and tattoos. And so 50% was like, who's that? I'm not going to listen to him. And the other 50% was like, oh, he's external. Maybe I should listen to him. You know, it was really fun. So I loved being in that space just to experience it, right? Like everyone has a picture of it and how that is. So I, 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 and I also learned a lot, you know, about communication and stuff like that. But it was just, it's just, yes, yeah, fascinating. It's fascinating to see and also to, that in, in, well, only worked, well, a total of four years in banking, but like in a short period of time, you see that game, like within two weeks, you understand that there's people who are just playing the internal game and creating nothing, nothing of value, basically. And they're just, yeah, just because there's so much money, they can play the game. It's actually, that's very sad, right? And, and mm -hmm. funny because in my like space of work, we had like all these new ideas, right? And some failed and some would continue and then my argument all the time was well would you put your own money into this if i asked you for 100k of your own money right now like would you put that money into this and obviously a lot of the answers were like no and then i said but well why would you put 100k of the bank in it like it's not it, and yeah that's not my money <laughs> you know and that's where a lot of i think waste comes from and it's just all the efforts are so scattered you know it's there's yeah there's just not a lot of value being created and if it's created yeah it's they're using other people's money right so it's just it's fair very i don't know it was a long rant but it's just uh, it, it taught me a lot right like it, it really opened my eyes to how some things work and then triggered me to think about it like what do i actually think about it right like mm -hmm. now that i saw the this information it really forced me to yeah, create an opinion, I'd say. And that's why we love Bitcoin and it's hard cap. You can't well, just create money out of thin air. You, exactly. You and, and also the trustlessness is like the past few weeks, like that dimension of Bitcoin has really popped up for me. Like everyone has their own issues with their own ego and their own life. And we all have the same journey of, well, as you expressed, right? Like, I did something yesterday. I talked to Michael Dunworth. We had the Confucius quote about a man has two lives and the second begins when he only realizes he has, uh, when he realizes he only has one, right? Like everyone has that journey, everyone, right? And we are all the same. No one is better than, than you or me. Like we, we are just all the same, right? And once you realize that, you can also, I think, accept that if we are all the same and eventually in the right place we are all corruptible because we want to 
I, I, I want you to die before me, basically, right? I, I want to live if, if there's a choice, right? So I will always choose myself as the survival instinct. Like once you accept that, you also will see that you don't want to follow rulers. You don't want to follow other people who create rules that become like the external influence of other people's lives. And once you think that that should not be the case, then you, I think, automatically end up at Bitcoin because that is just rules enforced by all the people in um, in the network. And therefore, because you can trust no one, you can trust everyone, basically, right? So we are all, um, you know, the people that contribute to the network, we are, yeah, accepting that we should trust rules and not rulers. And I, that is something that has uh, really become like a main point for me that I find very fascinating. Like I, I feel that Bitcoin in that sense is way more kind of like a personal journey and understanding of life and incentives and stuff like that than the, the technical part, for example. Yeah. How's that for you? Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, you know, <clears throat> so you have this 21 million hard cap and that's a thing I think most people struggle with because of they've spent their whole life you know being gaslit by by keynesian economics uh and, and a lot of people think well you know there's not enough bitcoin to go around for everybody so it's going to fail uh, when the then you have the conversation well it's digital so it can be divided down to 100 million units so you know you are now looking at whatever the number is uh, 2.1 quadrillion yeah whatever quadrillion, the, yeah. the 21 yeah. or 2.1 yeah one of the two yeah uh, exactly yeah, i don't <laughs> yeah. know there's too many zeros to even comprehend like so there's plenty and but, but also, but if something don't... is scarce, it's worth working for. So you have to be creative and yeah. add value, and therefore you can capture value. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And you can't just uh, create more of it out of thin air like we, we can in the, the banking system, as we've just been discussing. So under such a system, the reverse would happen. Prices wouldn't go up forever. Prices would go down forever. And that's when you lose a lot of people again because, they're, no, this can't be true. Like that. What a world would that be? Everybody would be poorer. You're like, huh? Like, what? It's because... But then people are looking at price, right? I think that's the trick. People are looking at yep. the unit numbers, the price of stuff. I think yep. that's the deception is in the the numbers and the height of the numbers and that that represents value. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt you, but that... No, no, no. Yeah. And getting stuck on looking at the uh, the price of Bitcoin priced in... Uh, in euro terms or dollar terms mm -hmm. or pound terms, whatever it is, uh, you, you, you get stuck looking at that number and, and you're still trapped in this fiat mindset of, oh, I'm going to have lots more dollars. Well, that, that's great, but everyone's going to have lots more dollars because they keep printing it. And that just still means the prices of things that you want and desire are going to go up priced in that, but they're going to go down priced in Bitcoin. Yeah. And then when you turn it around, if you think about just priced in bitcoin if you think about bitcoin is just a protocol that just is like one the, the meme of one bitcoin is one bitcoin that's the whole point one dollar is not one dollar yeah maybe now but now not anymore right like three seconds later it's already different right and so Correct. a dollar and dollar because in, 1980, in that last three seconds another mortgage has been written somewhere uh, exactly right so in 19 the dollar in 1980 is not the same dollar as as the one dollar now and i think that in general when we talk about bitcoin or, or trying to educate people right because as you mentioned in the beginning all this stuff it's never talked about even when people do a master in economics i have mm -hmm. some people on twitter that reply to me and they say like oh bitcoin is fake money this and that blah blah and then I ask, what is money? And then I get replies like, well, I'm a master of economics and I couldn't tell you. And then I think like, wow, wow sorry, what? <laughs> but so we don't get, uh, we're, we're, we're not being taught this, right? And so the, um, I forgot where I was going, but like the, the, the money thing, like we don't know what is money and we just look at the one thing, one USD is one USD, but that's, it's just not true and we are st it's still kind of laughable sometimes when people say like oh uh coca-cola whatever was one dollar 1980 and now it's three okay like nobody asks a question <laughs> why why that is right and yeah i find 
that angle fascinating. I think that that angle is very important to hopefully show people that something is really wrong, Absolutely. right? And and that we have to talk about the problem more or less. The we we think or we know that Bitcoin is the solution, but that is not, I think, where no, we should so you, start. Yeah, like this, this definition of inflation that people believe they actually believe what the central bank says. They actually believe that. <clears throat> um, a little bit of inflation in the economy is good for the economy. Like a, an economic PhD will com th th word for word, repeat that to you. Yeah. Uh, and like you said, they, they don't know because this, they haven't been taught. They've been taught what they need to be taught to keep this, uh, this game afoot. Uh, and here we go. I, I went to the, it's a Ponzi. <laughs> yeah, it is. I went to the homepage of the Bank of England the other day. It's like a I knowledge bonzi, funny. <laughs> I yeah. tweeted this. Let, let me pull this up because yeah. this is what's actually said on the Bank of England's homepage. Um, here we go. Inflation is a measure of how much the prices of goods, such as food or televisions and services, such as haircuts or train tickets, have gone up over time. It literally says that on the landing page of the Bank of England. I mean. That is a lie. The actual definition of inflation is an increase of the monetary supply, not an increase of prices. The increase of prices is a knock-on effect of increasing the yes. monetary supply. Now they go on to say, after that, uh, here we go, um, <clears throat> the money, we, so they then go on to talk about quantitative easing, and increasing the uh, the monetary supply into into the uh, into the system. Quote from the landing page of the Bank of England: The money we used to buy bonds when we were doing QE did not come from government taxation or borrowing. Instead, like other central banks, we <laughs> can create money digitally. They're not even hiding it. Yeah. It's there. Translation, I bought something of perceived value without actually creating value. Yeah, That's translation, what they say, we counterfeit right? money. Like yes. We literally counterfeit money. The Bank of England may as well just say, bankofengland.co.uk, your local money counterfeiters. Like it, and the same for the Fed and the same for Bank of yeah. Japan and the same for Royal Bank of Australia, every single central bank around the world. A counterfeiting money, and then the the banks that sit underneath them that the only people that can bank in such a fashion are the ones that are licensed to do that in their country by their central bank by their self ordained central bank, which yeah. is not part of the government so <laughs> we we ah oh, when people start waking up to this, you can't unsee it. And you get angry and you go through these like seven stages of grief, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, how and, could we word it differently, right? Because when you say it's counterfeiting, I talked with Jeff Booth about this, right? About inflation is theft and stuff like that. Yeah. The words for a lot of people are very hard. Even when you say counterfeiting, I still feel that somewhere, right? Like mm -hmm. it, it's just... And that's so fascinating because that belief that everything is okay and people are righteous and they're doing it for you, like that runs really deep. If, if you, especially if you grew up, I say there's a lot like mm -hmm. in a Western country where, you know, I had food and water and a roof and grew up in the best uh, time ever to grow up for any person who ever lived, right? So I, I never had had or saw a problem, right? So even... Now that I see Bitcoin and all these problems, I still feel it when you say counterfeiting, right? I feel like, no, that, that can't be true, right? It must not be true because if you, once you really integrate that, your whole worldview changes, I'd say, right? Yeah. So, well, I, I've, just, yeah. I've just looked up these, these stages of grief. Uh, there, there are That's either five one. or seven. <laughs> yeah. So let, let's, let's just do the five because it'll be quicker and they're pretty much yeah. the same anyway. Um, Denial is the first one. Yeah. So when, you know, you have this conversation with somebody out at lunch or whatever, and you bring this up, the first thing they do whenever you're trying to orange peel someone is deny. They're like, what, yeah. what are you talking about? Rolling yeah. the eyes. What are you like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course 100%. not. Yeah. 
Are yeah. you crazy? Are you out of your mind? Inflation yeah. is good for the economy. What web- website have you been on, uh, Daniel? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take your tinfoil hat off at the lunch table. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, right, there you go. Bam, denial. So then what comes next? Maybe because, you, you know, as you know, you plant the seed and it just slowly, like, it might keep you awake at night or you... Think about it. You see something that connects a dot with what you've been told. You're like, huh, that reminds me of that conversation. Boom. It, you know, something happens inside you. You see it. Yeah. Then it's anger is the next stage. You're angry because you should be. We have been duped. Mm. We've all been completely and utterly, totally stolen from. This is theft. Counterfeiting is immoral. And we've all been all into this system of destruction and it, yeah you should be angry but the problem is a lot of people get stuck there right we still see it even in the uh, uh bitcoin space today yeah. i have to think then, about before you continue i have to think about yesterday i think there was an episode <clears throat> oh yeah peter mccormack with rfk and yep. i saw a nice tweet the response by RFK on what brought Bitcoin to his attention. And then he says, if the government can punish you by shutting down your bank account without even charging you with a crime, they have the ultimate power to turn us into slaves. Like Again, hard words, but that ties into this angriness. Like once you realize that that is, that, that is actually the case, it's so messed up. Like you, you that, that's what I meant with then it changes your worldview because you realize that not everything you've been taught was loving or caring or true right yeah and and that there's a lot of things that have not been taught to you on and then pur- on purpose yeah, yeah. I, this is almost describing somebody's descent into the rabbit hole actually it's uh it's probably memeable if it's not been done already because the next stage is anger uh, excuse me no we've done anger denial uh, anger and then is, is um guilt or bargaining which is mm. what we were talking about like you know you bargain in your mind it's like well i I needed to take out that loan for that extra money for that mm. holiday. You know, a, a mortgage, most people, yes. Justifying your ignorance or something. Yeah, basically that, mm. yeah. Um, I, I needed to do that. And you're bargaining with yourself and you're trying to find a way around the, the guilt that is slowly yes, to creeping to not be disappointed in. in yourself. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. One. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which many people that have been through the Bitcoin rabbit hole arc have felt they felt all of these feelings and then depression a lot of people and you see it a lot of people are very depressed about huh how did we get here no mm. wonder society acts in such a way no wonder this is broken no wonder that is broken no, you know like this is this is bleak and a lot of people can get very very stuck there and uh, it's very dangerous to, mm. to linger in in that part of the uh the well, journey that's basically when you embrace the deception <laughs> right that, mm. that you lived mm-hmm. mm. it, pff, tough times <laughs> tough times yeah. and then finally you get you get to acceptance and you, mm. you you kind of like work your way through it you're like right okay that was tough but at least i know now and and what can i do to change course and uh that's why Bitcoin is so important to, to those of us that have found it because we can opt out of that system. We can opt out of that coercion and that manipulation and we can save. It gives it, you know, Bitcoin is savings technology. It's like, my God, I can save again just by exchanging this fiat currency that is designed to lose purchasing power. I can flip that into something that is designed to keep or increase in purchasing power yeah wow okay it's really a 180 i'm thinking maybe we should make a video on the stages of grief yeah (laughs) and then yeah just as you said like you because it is only when you go fully through it and you accept that you were unaware, that you've been duped, that you now know that you were disappointed in yourself, but now understand because the acceptance is actually only the first part, right? It's the acceptance is, okay, I see the problem now. I see the effect on my life. I have made the decision that that is 
I don't agree with that. I don't want to live this life, the one life, right? And that I'm influenced by all these other people who are no better than me, etc. Only then the rest of the Bitcoin journey starts, right? Because Bitcoin is only the the solution. I think mm -hmm. I think it's actually a very good uh, like a method to orange pill, perhaps, right? Because per stage you you can talk about these different things, and it's actually interesting because the 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 denial is only after you heard the facts, right? It's all a personal journey. It's not even about the facts they they come before it's really a personal journey and then after that you can research you know uh, a new subject bitcoin in this case right uh yeah it's just now that you share this i think like that i think that's a great great idea also because you're not gonna orange pill people with facts no they're not gonna help them see the problem uh just with the with the facts right yeah it's the way I, and it's, why I explained it to my daughter once, like, would you, would you carry on playing a game with somebody that you knew was always going to win because like the, the, they control the manual. They, or the, yeah, yeah. They, they, they <laughs> change the rules on you or, mm -hmm. you know, nobody likes playing with a cheat. If you're sitting down, like five of you are playing a game of Monopoly yeah. and one person keep sliding the 500s under their lap and everybody else knew but you all just carried on playing the game mm. because you know oh maybe maybe i'll still win like no you, you you're in a zero sum like you are going to lose it's funny because Period. it's like it's like i don't know if if this is like a thing but i feel like if you are a righteous person or you you have your morals in order or something, so to say, then when someone breaks that, let's say in this little game example, it takes some strength to actually believe in those morals at that like a confrontation moment and then like act upon it, right? Mm -hmm. But the weird thing here is that if you don't act upon it, you actually condone it, right? Mm -hmm. And you never test yourself on your own beliefs because you can think the beliefs but if you don't act it's worthless basically because you still allow the other person to to cheat so it does take some courage in a sense to actually live your your beliefs in a moment of confrontation even in a monopoly game right i think that's a great example mm -hmm. but what if it's a bigger game and and the person who is changing the rules to benefit themselves is actually pretty faceless or very far away from you physically or you know like i cannot drive to the central bank right now and knock on the door and say like hey can i talk to christine like that is just unrealistic right so but she is the cheat at the table yes exactly or well the the, he the head of the gang of cheats but yes yeah. right that's that's great and so if we translate that into Okay, you can probably not reach her. You cannot ring the, the bell and say, can I talk to her? So what are ways to live those beliefs well, you, you, is you to can, do the can, inner work first and then yeah. act. You right? can get up and you can walk away from the table. Just walk yeah. away. And that's what you do when you buy Bitcoin. You're walking away. You are saying, no more. I'm not playing this game anymore. Why would I sit here wasting my time playing this game when I know you're cheating? When I know it. I've seen you cheat. I know what you're doing. I know how you're doing it. I'm walking away. You just get up. But is this where we on. is this where we take the step to like the bread and circus distraction, low vibration, yeah. all that stuff? I think so, right? Because if you yeah. if you understand or feel, right? We see all the TikTok and short videos, you know, of people who have degrees uh but make 16 hours uh 16 dollars an hour when they're a teacher and whatever like people feel that something is going on mm -hmm. they're not acting upon it they're uh making selfies <laughs> for likes right even that is just, well um how how can we help people be more aware that they 
the only thing they can do is act, right? Like you have to, you have to start m- moving in a sense, right? Move to another system. Um, like how, how I lost my train of thought here, but like, how, how can we do that? Because it is this personal thing, right? Like if you yeah. feel like this is not okay, what can I do about it? Well, if, if your answer is I cannot do anything about it and you wake up every morning depressed or stressed or whatever, uh, along with the bread and circus distractions of... There you go. That's that's where you were going with this, the bread yeah, and circus. Yeah, along, along yeah. with that, then that inner journey is very difficult to, mm-hmm. to understand, okay, these are my beliefs. I am actually right. Holy shit, th- this thing outside of me is... Uh, corrupted i have to move i have to do something right but i i feel that the bread and circus part is part of keeping you away from that uh yeah inner work or realization however you want to call it to actually get to the point where you believe yourself basically yeah let, let's yeah. unpack that for those people that you know must might be wondering what we're talking about bread and circuses and i i don't remember which roman uh philosopher or uh advisor to whichever roman emperor um, but basically, it was said, well, give them bread and circuses and they will not revolt. Uh, so basically, make sure you've got some kind of cheap form of food on the table. So even today, we have subsidized bread in most countries and we're monocropping wheat at ridiculous rates um, just to make sure that there's enough grain to keep bread, for yeah. example, on the table or, the, or all of the derivatives. Well, now you're not starving product. and you get happy dopamine feeling. Yep. From uh, exactly. crazy fights in the Colosseum and uh, <laughs> they had yeah. lotteries and clown shows and whatever entertainment, you exactly. know, whatever you want to say is circus. And, yeah. that, and, and the circuses today are all of that. All of television is a circus. All of politics is a circus. All of the sporting events are, you know, circuses mm. you know, directly comparable to um, the Colosseum because you, you go to a Colosseum, there's 80,000 people there. And they're baying for blood in many, many circumstances that, you know, that your team has to win at all costs. You can't go there and enjoy a game of football or a game of hockey or a game of whatever if you're emotionally involved in it, which almost certainly every person there is. And wow, there is two to three hours of your life completely and utterly, totally controlled. Your, your emotions are raised. You're, you're not thinking clearly and you'll go home and you well, won't your think attention clearly. is on something that is yeah. made Absolutely. up basically right you're, you're, yeah. <laughs> you're certainly not thinking about 21 million hard cap and finite digital <laughs> scarcity <No>. <laughs> <laughs> exactly you're not yeah if, uh, yeah it's fascinating how we can trick ourselves right and mm-hmm. uh, like also i feel that it's important for for us, when when we have the feeling that we are, you know, we see Bitcoin, we see the problems, etc., that we 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 do still discuss with compassion because we were also and are still in some fact, like as I just said to you, like when you use the word like counterfeiting, I still feel it, right? So I'm still kind of trapped in this old thinking and identity and stuff, right? Like I I feel that once we talk about this, it should be with compassion and like understand that yes we are all easily trapped with with food and dopamine basically right like that is mm-hmm. just uh that's just how it is, how it is right yeah. it's no one's no one's individual fault and then how do you, you break out of that well yeah. this is something that a lot of bitcoiners have talked about before so many people have changed what they eat they've changed their diet completely they've changed their their lifestyle completely and i've seen so many accounts of and I felt this myself. I I have not watched a full game of football. I used to watch football. I used to be a season ticket holder when I was in the UK. Football, soccer, for you American listeners, used to take up so much of my time and energy and money as well mm. that that was all I was ever talking about. And this is such a reversal in my mind. It's like, huh, I look at it now. It's just a pure distraction. I have I can actually sit down and watch a game of football if I want to without being that emotionally tied to it. But to and be devil's advocate, right? If people if people hear this, they would say like, "Yeah, but come on, Daniel, I can have some fun in my life, of, you know." But of course. 
isn't that the whole point? The fact that you need fun in your life. What? You know, like that, yeah. that's already a very interesting <laughs> sentence, don't you think? Like, okay, so my life is not fun. So I'm escaping to have fun. If you think about why is my life not fun, maybe then you end up, you know, <laughs> at the money problem in yep. a sense, right? So, but that is maybe also the denial instinct, like, yeah, but I should have fun. I mean, like, what are you talking about? And give people their uh, their football game on Sunday. They're not wrong. In Yeah, they're not wrong, right? But I feel like that's already... I agree with you, but I think it's interesting how, how what the the perceived how, how people can perceive that. Yeah, it's interesting how it all slowly unravels over time. Yeah, and how you start guarding your time and actually interacting with the things that do truly make you happy and do truly make you um, uh, uh, you truly are interested in. Yeah. It will expose the the things that you you are just doing for doing sake. Yeah, I also feel like you are more conscious of your time when you understand Bitcoin. Like you are conscious of what you spend time on, but also what you spend money on, or if mm-hmm. you want to buy more stuff. And like I feel like I've been living really uh, frugal in a sense. You know, like I think everyone likes nice things in a sense right whatever whatever you like doesn't really matter but i've had so many uh moments where i was like oh i want this oh no like do i really need it no not really like that is really difference a, a real difference in in my thinking i'd say like less of this the the whole consumerism you know world where you grow up in and that you also see i think in places where people are less fortunate right or or have less prosperity and stuff like that thinking did trickle down like these places and sometimes when i think about that like that that is very sad like like mm. like that is the purpose of life get more sh- shit that you yeah. don't need well, you know even... that i like to impress people that you don't like i love that quote yeah that's like, perfect. but there's, there's even there's it, even like a term for it right retail therapy people will say that oh really They'll just go out <laughs> Yeah. They'll go out and buy shit they don't need to impress people they don't like, but it makes them feel good in the moment. Mm. It makes them feel good when they bring it home and they can display it. Two or three days later, you've forgotten about it, and you're straight back in that loop of depression and anxiety and you know, completely you're totally unfulfilled. So what do you fix, oh, I need a, basically? I need a bit more retail therapy. So you'll go out and you'll buy another. Like, it's just an mm. endless cycle. This consumption era in which we live is um and look at look at the crap that gets churned out you know it, it's just incredible the amount of products that are out there that shouldn't exist wouldn't exist under a sound money standard have you ever seen that video in uh it's in china or indonesia or something it's a warehouse and they have like all these not cubicles but like square like 25 square meters like places and there's Women working there, they are live on TikTok and they sell stuff. It's like a full, it's like a warehouse full, and there's someone like walking through it and showing you all these little cabins, all these little studios, and they're just selling crap. It's like AliExpress stuff, and they're selling it on TikTok. And that's like the epitome of mm-hmm. the wastefulness of this wrong, like the fiat world, right? Then, yep. They're just on your phone scrolling, buying stuff. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But and how now that we were talking about this, I was thinking about um you know, the people that talk about the environment, we need to save the planet, all, all these things. Like I think we need to take care of the planet. The you know, the nature was here before us, so we have to respect that. I love that by the way. I think it's in New Zealand. You have like these tribes and they they put nature first. So whenever they think mm-hmm. of chopping down a tree to build a house or a road or whatever, like they they realize that the nature was there before them. And so um, they really reflect on if they should actually do that, right? Um, but when we talk about this mindset and people being trapped, I feel that in some ways 
this environmental activism type is, is also kind of, uh, I don't want to say circus, but it's like a social thing that people gather around without actually talking about the the real problems, right? It's It's sometimes, although I agree that we have to take better care of the world. Like, it feels like this is also like a distraction in a sense. Like, what, uh, what do you think of that? Or, or for these people or type of people or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. um, it's yeah. such an easy psyop. It's like, oh, what? You don't care about the planet? Oh, how dare you? You know, you could cancel someone immediately with like one sentence. But um, you, yeah, like the social justice warriors that would uh, just like scream about anything without doing any mm -hmm. kind of research and will just blatantly mouth flap repeat what they've heard on mainstream media about the environment and yeah. what Greta has recently said uh that there is no it's way more no nuanced basis. i'd say like the world and everything is way more nuanced than how people discuss it nowadays right like mm -hmm. now it's like i'm right you're wrong oh do you also think i'm right well now we're a group you know but that's and 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 daniel's an idiot or something you know like uh, i don't think it works <laughs> it works like that you know it's way more nuanced and because these people find each other in this very narrow agreement of thoughts or something that's why i said circus in the sense that oh yeah then we're yeah. together and we feel something and we are validated and blah blah but you are not actually right like right right you are directionally perhaps doing a good thing. But yeah, it's also, you're spending time on this and that is actually the whole point that it's also a distraction from the real reasons why um, yeah, the real reason change our why, behavior and stuff. Yeah, the, the real reasons why this narrative is being pushed so heavy by such interested parties and lobby groups that are benefiting and making money from this narrative, you know, that the narrative has been curated to make money for a certain few people that have very, very big interests in the, the narratives getting spread around. Um, and we just swallow it. And we're just like, yeah, okay. We believe that now, you know, like the current thing meme. I love that. You know, uh, I believe the current thing. And people just have their <laughs> minds changed yeah. by the news. Yeah. Mainstream media, daily, daily, like that they will wake up, check their phone. It used to be on the train. You, you would buy the morning paper when I was going in and out of, uh, of work. And the headlines would be your conversational topics throughout that day. You were programmed. Your conversations were being programmed for the next 12 hours. And that's nuts. Yeah, that's absolutely nuts. There wouldn't be any discord about it. There wouldn't be any conversation, true debate. It would just be, oh, did you see this? Oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Well, I better agree with him because, you know, it seems everybody else in the office is agreeing on that side. And I don't want to be the one that has the opposing view. Yeah. Voila. Funny, yeah. It's, funny. it's, it's, it's just so interesting that it takes a lot of work to to not step into that trap it's an easy it's easy it's 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 an easy um it's an easy reward to just follow what someone else is doing and it's hard to actually yeah do the work i think that you that you actually it's it's more the inner journey is way more important than however you connect with others i'd say like how can you connect with others if you don't know yourself right and i think that's why that that trap is so easy that yeah and and, and a lot of people obviously step into that i mean i've definitely done that in the past you know mm -hmm. but that's why i think this found, is so difficult that people have, are have just you found trapped, yeah. have you found that like your uh not only has your personality changed um people have started moving away from you because the, you, 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 you're, ha you're, happy, you're happy to speak your mind now because you have truth on your side. You understand. You've seen what you've seen. Uh, you're not willing to be the guy in the bar that just goes along with the conversation. You're the guy now mm. who's going to turn around and say, well, like, no. Like, actually, yeah, I think I do that know? more. I think I do that more. I was already kind of like that in a sense that 
you know, even if, if there's a guy who comes here to the house, like a plumber and he has to do stuff like I still, I watch what he does not to control him, but I want to understand how it works because I cannot do it. And he can literally why I'm paying him. And, and so I've always been, I was always the annoying guy in class. Like, oh, there's Bram again with his question. And I think like, yeah, of course, like, duh. Like I want, I ask a question because I want to understand. And sometimes I feel like there's not that many people that think like that, right? Like I, I, I have found it so fascinating when people would say that, like, oh, are you asking questions again? And I think like, yeah, like it's a conversation, right? I'm, I'm being taught something in, in uh, you know, this in college. And I just want to understand better, like why, why would I adopt one thing one person says? You know, like I think it's we are discovering together how something, for example, has happened in the past, how we view it right now, and how you can apply it in the future, right? I, I, I feel like that's a conversation, or at least should be a conversation, right? Um, so I was always like that, but now with this, I, I, yeah, like I said before, like I think I grew up. Um, just in a very safe, nice place. Not, uh, yeah, just in a Western world, like, no, yeah, you have no problems. Like, there's no there's no problems, right? Although everyone has, you know, uh, personal struggles or traumas or whatever, like all these things. But I mean, like real life threatening stuff, you know, not, not, no. And it, after I really understood not only Bitcoin, but actually, you know, what it's solving and all the things that we talked about. I really realized that um, I could not unsee it. And because I cannot unsee it, I cannot have these uh, simple, <laughs> that's not a nice word, but like these conversations, like I just don't care. I think it's, uh, I, yeah, I just don't care. Yeah, uh, like, yeah, what's the, I used to watch soccer as well. Like I don't watch that. Like I, nothing on, I don't, I only have internet at home. I don't watch TV. Yeah, I, I I think it's just naturally like you don't get energy from other people. And I feel like in Bitcoin, at least like how you connect with each other is that, you know, that when you when you talk to someone who really understands Bitcoin, apart from the subject Bitcoin, you know that they did the personal work that was needed for them to end up to this point and i think that is what connects people in bitcoin that you whatever your background or experience or whatever it doesn't really matter religion like all these things don't matter in bitcoin it's about that personal journey that you went through or still are going through like you know that uh, as we mentioned before it takes courage courage towards yourself not to impress just towards yourself like okay it's me no one's coming to save me. I have a belief. I see it's not true. I can deny that. Or I can investigate it. What you will find, you know, up front is not fun <laughs> to experience, right? Because you will go to these grief stages. And once you do that, you recognize and click with people who also did that. And then again, like a religion or any preference to whatever subject is irrelevant because mm -hmm. it's not what it's about. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so I don't know and if that's you, an you answer find to your yourself... question but yeah I see that if people don't do that work you you recognize when people are not like that right so um, putting a lot of things on other people or external forces like not talking about yourself you know like your own or kind of you know the reflection talk that we have now is like you know, this is my journey, that's your journey. And, and, and discussing that, that gives me energy because I know that I don't know anything, right? But once I talk to someone who talks about, well, this person is a sucker or whatever, like whatever, like putting the the evidence or the reasoning outside, way outside of themselves, then you know that, that they did not do the work. And that's not a judgment, but yeah, it's just hard to connect with with those people. And this is the... What I think is so important about building out the uh, the social layer of Bitcoin, mm. and that's why I'm a big fan of going to the conferences, going to meetups, going to events, uh, getting to meet other Bitcoiners. Um, and I'll shill Orange Pill at because I think they've done an incredible job over the last year of bringing people together. And the 
the success stories that we hear from people that have randomly met each other on that app didn't realize they were like 10 to 15 miles away from each other mm. had been the lonely bitcoiner in their family for the last 18 months three years however long go and meet have the most amazing discussion they've ever had with somebody they would never have met otherwise yeah and to your point you could have somebody two people from completely different sectors completely different ages completely different races completely different religions completely different beliefs across the whole spectrum one might even be a manchester united fan and one might be a manchester city fan but you bring the bitcoin element to the table none of that shit matters mm. and you will form a relationship and go forward and create a meetup for your local area or you you'll create a company or you'll create an article together or you'll create a podcast together or something yeah to help other people understand mm. to help your local community understand maybe you'll get together and go around and try and orange pill all your favorite bars and cafes and just can you please accept bitcoin this is how you do it and then we can put you on btc maps and then other people when they visit the city or this town they can come mm. and you've just opened up a whole new business line whole new revenue line you didn't know existed so you're adding value to the community, but you're also giving yourself the opportunity to bring other Bitcoiners to come and meet you and to come and find you and to build out this social layer. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, and it can't go underappreciated. Uh, so, yeah, more of it, more, more of conversations like this, more, co more podcasts, more YouTube videos. And it's so amazing to see. I saw one the other day that I didn't even know existed, like Bitcoin veterans. Yeah, three cool. ex-military guys yeah. interviewing ex-military guys. Like this is awesome. Yeah. Like you know, this is bring it on. And, and what's next? You know, uh, I, I can't wait to the t uh, for the day where we have a high-profile. I know it's happened in the states. Um, we've got high-profile athletes, but high-profile athlete maybe in Europe that starts their own podcast and starts bringing on other athletes to either orange pill them or they are orange pilled and they want to come on and share their story because their reach will just explode yeah but that is still just building out the the social layer of bitcoin and getting people connected and understanding that there's something going on here it's good for me it's good for you it's good for our community and all the way back to what you said at the beginning you know it's rules without rulers we don't have anybody telling us what to do what we can build, what we can't build, what we can say, what we can't say. Uh, okay, maybe in the <laughs> maybe your, your YouTube channel gets shut down or whatever for for spreading medical misinformation, you know. But you are protecting yourself with people around you who have the same, who have seen this, have been on the same journey, have the same beliefs, understand the problem at hand know what the fix is and are willing to put their neck on the line and educate others. Whereas many, many people wouldn't, they don't want to stand up. Yeah. They just want to stay anonymous and that's perfectly fine as well. Uh, but these conversations and building out this, this, this layer, the social layer is, is very, very important as we go forward into the next yeah, hey, we got a halving next year. How many people are going to come? <laughs> How many people are going to come yeah. when like, so we've got to be ready as a community. We've got to be ready to have all of the tools ready and all of the education ready. And with each cycle, yeah, whatever someone's angle is, right? I mean, you have the veterans. I uh, focus on millennials, right? And it's just yeah. like it doesn't matter. And I think I had the exact same experience actually. If you uh, like a month ago, I went to uh, Bitcoin Amsterdam conference, my first Bitcoin conference, and like my mm -hmm. personal Bitcoin journey has been. In a, in a very tiny, like, local social circle, also changed over the years, right? Right now, I think I have maybe three people who I actively, you know, meet and, 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 and talk to. But when I went to the conference and I was in the back of the room of a uh, talk by uh, Rational Root, and I was like, damn, all these people like the same thing and are interested in this same thing that felt really amazing actually to see that right that that 
Um, and I also talked with uh, Thomas Ferrer about this. Um, that it's just so nice, also these conversations, to realize that, you know, sometimes you end up in your research or in your challenging your own thinking or trying to be rational. You end up in a place where you think like, really? Is this mm-hmm. really how it works? Or is this now really my viewpoint on this, right? And it's hard to accept that. But once you have a, a conversation and you reflect with someone else and you understand that you're not the only one who's seeing the same thing, like that is, that's just, that's a good feeling because then you see that you can also trust your own like bar of how you are are putting in the work and trying to mm-hmm. better yourself and and challenge yourself and so yeah i completely agree i absolutely love so that for, for the yeah. last the last 10 minutes here let's talk about um that that feeling that you get when you were at the conference uh you you, you would have felt an energy right a, mm-hmm. um frequency a higher frequency than you would have done if you were at a a, a, a new yeah. a new car convention or a uh, or you know a, uh, a soft furnishing home convention or whatever you know industry yeah, it's element. totally not entertainment it's not <laughs> like you have to pay attention if you want to right and that's why if you're you, there if you're, at, if you're at the new car exhibition you'd think right everybody's here for the same reason i'm going to vibe with everybody here but you walk mm. around and ignore everyone because you just want to see the cars and you don't care who else is there Whereas you go to a Bitcoin conference, you end up missing all of the freaking presentations because you're talking yes, with exactly. absolutely everybody. <laughs> that's hundred percent true. Yeah, and that's <laughs> also and and I met some people that I only knew from online, and it's just like I don't know, like you hug each other, and it's like a high five. It's just like you already have some sort of mutual understanding, and that is just really inviting to explore further, right? And then again, it doesn't really matter where someone comes from or what else they believe, like. That is fair. I, I, I don't know. Maybe this is big, but I think like that is what the human connection is about, right? That that you connect, literally connect with each other, um, more in a in 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 in, in like a spiritual way ish than mm-hmm. if you like men united together, right? Mm-hmm. It's different. It's not that mm-hmm. you know. I'm not bashing on men united fans or whoever. But it's just a different experience. And yeah, I think that's very, very rewarding. And it definitely does not imply that we know everything. Absolutely not. Right. But it's fun and, 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 and engaging, naturally engaging to have that connection and then uh, meet other people, you know. And also now uh, with this podcast, I, uh, I find it interesting to see that I, uh, because you've been doing a podcast way longer, right? And I'm just starting out and I felt like, should there be another podcast? And then I think, I felt like, why not? And now I'm doing it. It's so much fun. Like, it's just, I'm meeting people all over the world and uh, it's just really rewarding, right? So few numbers and all that stuff doesn't really matter because it's already really rewarding to just exchange ideas. and. That's already enough. Hundred uh, percent. All right, man. We, we've got a. I've just seen a time where I know yeah. we both have a half hard stop in around six six minutes or so. So, if you had one last orange pill left to give to somebody, who would you give it to, and why? Who I would give that to? Wow. Um, well, to be honest, I <laughs> I would love for someone who is very well known to actually understand it and well known i mean like just information distribution wise that a lot of people would listen to what this person has to say just to get the information out (laughs) right so i don't know i'm thinking about like uh, there should be a bitcoiner on joe rogan right or someone like i don't know uh, leonardo dicaprio or the rock or whatever just a person who has like a megaphone should actually like discuss the problem that that we touched upon just to have like an information symmetry so that people can start you know because i think orange pilling is the in is the individual journey you cannot orange pill someone right i i think that's yeah 
you you know it's it's a person's belief so i think that that would be my answer so explaining the problem less orange pilling explaining the problem you can talk about bitcoin but more like explaining the problem information symmetry from someone or by someone with uh just enough reach because I've, i i also feel sometimes that if there's 8 or, or 800 million or 1 billion people that understand this it it's enough like not everyone has to understand it to and they, they don't all have to move away from the current system right i think i think the people that have to move away from the current system the the total number is way less than what we actually think what is needed to make a change i i don't i don't think mm-hmm. it should be 5 billion people or something i i mm-hmm. it feels like it it's less to show an actual signal yeah gradually then suddenly ladies and gentlemen we'll see All right, brother. well um people can find you at brand k yeah on on twitter and yes. uh the, the podcast is bitcoin for millennials well and your podcast is uh once bitten right we're gonna yep. we're gonna cross uh publish uh this i'll add your twitter in the show notes and um yeah thanks so much for this conversation uh i love that we just uh you know, without any uh, prep, we we just did this. I think yep. uh, that's super fun. Let's definitely do it again. And maybe, uh, yeah, we can talk through the stages of grief and connect it to Bitcoin. I think that's, uh, <laughs> that's a fun, uh, it's a fun, I, I'm a fun thought forward, exercise. I'm looking forward to your PDF presentation. Yes. Of, uh, okay. yeah, the rabbit hole journey <laughs> and five stages of grief. And, uh, sure. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day, brother. Great to, you uh, too, great to have another conversation. Cheers. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, it would be amazing if you could rate, review, and subscribe on the podcast platform of your choice. It will help us educate more millennials on the importance of Bitcoin. You can follow and connect with me on Twitter. I'm Bramke, that's at B-R-A-M-K. And if you are or know someone who has an interesting perspective on Bitcoin that's worth sharing, hit me up. I read and reply to every single message. I appreciate your support and hope you'll be here for the next episode. Thanks for listening. Bye.